Hi, welcome to the tutorial to making custom songs in Autica. Just a few disclaimers, this is a very bare bones tutorial because the custom song creation process for Autica is in its early stages so a lot of things are very rough and I just wanted to make this tutorial to get people started and get their foot in the door and making custom songs like right away. So, a few things to note, there are timestamps in the video description. So if you wanted to skip around and find exactly what you needed, you can click on those timestamps and skip to the relevant information. If the information in this video ends up being outdated, which it will, I'll put information in the video description. So before we begin, there's a couple of things that you need. Um, first is download the Autica editor. Next, you'll need Rock Band DLC tools. You will also need a blank template of a Autica custom song. Next, you'll also need a text editor. Um, I know people like to use Notepad++, but for this video, I'm going to be using Sublime Text. Next, I also recommend that you download and install Reaper, which is an audio editing software. Um, it's free to download and there's a free trial with all of the functionality that you'll need. And once the free trial ends, it'll prompt you to purchase a license, but you will still maintain full functionality of the program. Um, also, you will need 7-Zip. Um, and uh, last but not least, you will need the MP3 or the audio file of the song that you want to make a custom song for. Now, with that out of the way, um, let's begin. All right, so here we are in Reaper. Specific to creating Autica custom songs, there's two important things to remember. Um, the first thing is, Make sure there's enough time in the song at the very beginning before you place any notes. Because if you place any notes at the very beginning of a song, then it's actually not going to work and it's going to break your game. So, um, so number one, make sure that there's enough time, like dead time or silence at the beginning of the song uh, before you place notes. And then number two, is we need to set the BPM for the MIDI file that we're creating. Um, so go ahead and get started. Um, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be mapping Megalovania. Um, so the BPM for a Megalovania is 120. Um, I would change that here, but it's already set to 120, so I don't need to worry about that. We're going to align it to the grid. Okay, so make sure your metronome's enabled and see how the sync is. Yeah, so it sounds on sync. Um, and then, so these first four measures is, there aren't gonna be any notes. So this is gonna be my intro for the song. And then I'm only gonna start mapping notes once we get to measure five. Um, so now um, we're going to, um, yeah, so we're going to export the AUG. Um, and then, so this is uh, the folder that I'm going to keep all my files organized in. So render this AUG here. Now we are going to create the MIDI. So we're going to go to track, insert new track. Make sure the cursor is at the very beginning of the track. And now insert new MIDI item. There's our MIDI. And then we're not going to place any notes because this is a bare bones tutorial and then uh, we just want to get custom songs working. So we're going to export the MIDI now. Um, again, this is the folder where I'm putting all my stuff. And so the important thing to make note is embed project tempo and time signature changes. So that's going to put our tempo into the MIDI. So export, and then we're going to name it Megalovania. Oh, it already did. Whoops. Here we go. Lavinia, close. All right, um, and that's all we need to do in Reaper. So the last thing we need to do in order to prepare our audio is to use Rock Band DLC tools. Um, so hopefully you downloaded that. Change to this tab, and what we're going to do is convert our AUG file that we just rendered into a MOG file. So open AUG file here, 
this is the one that we just rendered open it up and then save and then that's all we need to do go here and then there's our mog file so we're going to need that later okay we're just about ready to open up the editor. I downloaded and already unpacked all of the files into this folder. So this is what it should look like. What we're going to do now is drag the AUG file that we just rendered. And drag that in. So when we open the editor, it's going to automatically load this audio file, whichever audio file is in the same directory as this executable. So we're going to open this up. Make sure the resolution is 1920 by 1080. Otherwise, the UI kind of bugs out a little bit. Hit play. Okay, so this is the editor. Um, keep in mind that this is a very early pre-release. So there might be some bugs and maybe some missing features that you'll run into, but it's still in development. It still makes a custom song, so that's all we need for now. Um, now I'll explain some of the UI that we see here. At the very top we see the timeline, and then it already loaded in our song represented by the orange waveform. And then we have these grid lines which helps us sync to the song. We have our note grid here which is where we place the notes. We have our note types, so you can choose the different types. And then we have this side panel here with um, several information. So I'll explain these as I go along. Um, so now, for the basic controls, we have space to play the song. And then hit space again to pause. To manually scroll backwards and forwards in the song, we have the scroll wheel on our mouse. So going backwards and then going forwards. So the amount of time that it goes forwards or backwards in the song, in the timeline, is determined by beat snap here. So right now it's set to a quarter, so it's going to skip forward by a quarter note, or in this case a beat. There we go. And go back. And then, so if you want this to be more precise, we can set it to 1-8. So that's going to skip from here to here, here to here. And then even more precise, 16. So here to here or so. And you can get really, really small. So for the most part, basically all you're going to need is a quarter note, uh, 8 note, um, and sixteenth. You might have to do some triplets or some sixths. But anyways, you, that's where you set the beat snap. We're going to put it back to f uh, a quarter for now. So for basic controls, we have the left click, which places a note, and then basically you just go anywhere on the grid and then it snaps to where you want it to go. And then right click to delete. So. So if you wanted to place a note kind of off the grid, what you can do to turn it off is hit N, and then you can freely place a note anywhere. And then to turn on the grid again is G. So N to turn it off, G to turn it back on. So with the grid off, you can place anywhere you want, make random shapes. Again, I'm deleting with right click. And basically that's all you need to know for controls. So now I'll start explaining the note types here. So you have the normal target, which you just shoot with either your left or your right hand. Um, you even have um, left or right hands, but these, you probably don't need to use these in your maps. So I'll delete that. You have your hold notes. These are the ones where you have to hold down the trigger until the target is destroyed. Currently in the editor, there's no way to edit how long the sustain will last. Um, so what you have to do is export it from the editor and then, and then manually edit that file using a text editor, um, which I'll go over after we're done in the editor. You've got your slot targets here. So here we have the chain notes. This is the chain starter, and then these are the chain links. 
So uh, to use these, what you do is you place a chain start, and then you go forward in time. Um, that's a little too fast, or that's a little too slow. We'll go 16th note. So go forward in time, and then you start placing the links whichever path you want to take. So that'll look like this. And then you'll have a chain that goes through. Um, again, you can right click. Also, you can right click directly from the timeline. And then you have your melee notes. So melees in game, at least in the base game songs, are usually um, left or right hand. Um, however, if you wanted to specify which hand you want the player to hit with, you can use left or right. But the base game tracks, they usually only use left or right. And then if you're only going to have one instead of a double, you're just going to have a single melee, it's, it's usually better to have it in the higher spot. So those were the note types. Before we dive into mapping, let's go ahead and change these values. So um, since we synced up our song in Reaper, we set this to zero. But if you needed to set an offset, then you can set it here. Um, our song is 120. So we set that here. Uh, hit enter. And so what that does is make sure that um, these grid lines are lined up to our song. All right, and then we should be able to begin mapping. All right, so now that we have our song mapped out, um, we're going to export it um, and see if we can play test it. So you just go here and click export. And what that does, if we look in the folder that our editor files were in, we have these two new files, which is the .qs file and the .desk file. So this is this holds the information for all of our notes, and then this is information like BPM, etc. So before uh, before we're done with the editor, I just wanted to close out. There's actually no quit button. You have to either um, Alt F4 or close it like that. Um, kind of ghetto, I know, but anyways. So whenever you start the editor again, it's just going to automatically load our song again. And then there's the there are the notes that we placed. So what the editor does is load whichever cues file is in the same directory. If you have more than one cues file, then it's gonna load the first one that comes alphabetically. So for example, if you had um, something called advanced uh, caps lock, advanced cues then it would load this when you boot it up instead. So just be wary of that when you're loading in your songs. So the last thing we're going to do before we start building the game files is change the length of our sustains. So um, I just opened up the .qs file. And then basically you can use any text editor. Um, so again, for this tutorial, I'm using Sublime Text. Um, so what we want to do is find our sustains and increase the tick length. So tick length is what determines how long those notes are. So to find our sustain notes, what we can do is control F to find, and then the sustain notes, they're always behavior type three. So we had two sustains in our song, and then we found both of them here. So what we'll do is go to tick length, and um, basically one beat, or one quarter note, is 480 ticks. So if we wanted to, uh, say, um, have our sustain last for three beats, what we would do is, 
and calculator. 480 times <laughs> 3. 1440, there we go. So if you wanted to have three beats, we just change this to 1440. Find our other sustain, change this to 1440, and then just save. And then that should make our sustains um, last for three beats. So now we're going to build the game files necessary for the game to read your custom song. So again, um, we created this .qs file from the editor, and then it also automatically um, created this song.desk file. So we're going to open it up this and make sure it has the relevant information. So, so it automatically creates this. It has the tempo in it um, from our song here, so 120. And then all this other information, you manually fill out yourself. Um, be sure to check out the mapping documentation, which will be linked in the video description. So it basically shows what each of these things is. Um, but for now, I'm just going to speed through this. All right, so I have this all filled up with relevant information. So artist, title, etc. So most of these... Um, you could just copy and paste from the template, um, tempo 120, um, song end event. Basically what this does is whenever you clear the song, it has that note that rings out at the end. So if you know which key signature your song is in, you can have it play a note that fits that key signature. So for example, Megalovania is in the key of D minor, I believe. So I'm just going to make that a D. Um, everything else, make sure it's like this. Um, again, just double check with the mapping documentation. And, um, and you can also look at my example here. Cool. Now we're going to save this. So we have our keys file and then our desk file. We'll go ahead and re uh, rename this as expert because that's the difficulty that we wanted. Um, and now let's go back to our workbench. What we're going to do now is create a folder just to be more organized. Megalovania. And then there's this template. This is the template that you should have downloaded earlier. Um, copy all of the files from here and put it in here into the song folder. And now we're going to start replacing some of these with the files that we edited. So there are a total of four files that you need to replace. So the first one is your keys file. Drag that in. So we've got our new. So th those are all of our notes. Next, we want to drag in our song.desk. So next we want to find our mog. So where's our mog file? Here we go. So drag that in. Um, what we're going to do is delete this mog and replace it with this. And we're going to rename it song.mog because all of these files here, which you don't have to worry about um, right now, but all of these files here refer to this mog by this file name. So we want to make sure that this is consistent. Um, and this is the same thing for the MIDI, which we'll replace right now. So here's our MIDI. Drag that in. Delete this. Rename as song.mid. Um, and then those are all the files that we need for our custom song. Um, in the template, all the lower difficulties, they're empty except for two notes, but um, we won't worry about those for now. If people try to play it, then they'll be able to shoot those two notes and then the song will end. But for now, we are going to use 7-zip to add to archive. So what we'll do is we want to go into this folder and then we'll name this 
megalovania.audica. And then this is very important. So archive format is zip, compression level is store. Um, this will be important as well, so add and replace files, but that should be on by default. Um, so again, megalovania.audica. Okay, so now if we go back up, we should see meg megalovania.audica. So if we open it up in 7-zip, open archive, we should see all of our files. Yep, modified, yep. All right, now all that's left to do is to move this into the songs directory of your Autica game. Let's see. So, I already have, this is the folder where all of the Autica songs are kept. Um, if you look at the directory, it is Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Autica, Autica Data, Streaming Assets, Harmonix Audio Assets, Song. So in this folder, you can see all of the existing songs you have. You just want to copy and paste your custom song into here, and then that should be it. Um, all that's left to do is to boot up your game and to see if it works. So as you can see, here it is in the song list. Whenever you play test, make sure no fail is on. And there we go, um, should work. If the notes are out of sync, then you probably didn't set the BPM correctly in the MIDI file, so revisit that step right at the beginning of the video. Other reasons your song might be breaking is you tried mapping a chain, but then you didn't actually use the right chain starter. You might have accidentally used a sustain instead. There's also a chance that you accidentally mapped notes right at the beginning of the map, and remember you're supposed to wait a little bit before you start placing notes. So once again, this is a bare bones tutorial. Once there are more updates for the editor, I will probably make a more in-depth video on the editor. Um, but for now, just wanted to get you guys started. Again, if there are any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you guys out. And this is where I do the YouTube thing where I say, if you guys thought this tutorial was helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It is actually greatly appreciated. Um, so once again, thank you, um, and hope this helped you guys out.